Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Lazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com and today we'll do the April update. So first to start with this update, uh, we will talk about the joint implementation and preparedness plan for the regulation uh, 2017-746, so for the IVDR. So this is mainly the plan for the EU Commission to how, how to implement uh, this uh, this regulation or how to support to guide and to uh, to move forward with this um, so uh, if you look at the document there is a, a lot of uh, topics that are discussed like uh, contingency planning and monitoring so uh, availability of notified bodies also uh, EU reference laboratories common specifications guidance for notified bodies performance evaluation and expert panel uh, standards companion diagnostics in-house devices legacy devices Udamed and what happens beyond the 26th of May 2022. So if you are in this um, business, this will help you to understand the situation uh, because mainly there are a lot of things that are missing, like a lot of notified bodies, EU laboratories uh, to uh, certify your products. Uh, all those things that are missing uh, can be a problem for the implementation of the IVDR. So here they are uh, mainly explaining to you uh, what uh, what is the plan. There is also at the end of this document, and you can find that on the show notes, uh, a lot of actions that are mentioned, and there is some action that were already completed, some actions that are ongoing. So there is all there are all the actions that uh, mainly uh, you that are in place there. So. If you have some question related to uh, this and to you are asking yourself where are they on this or where are they on that, so here on this document you can get everything for the uh, IVDR. For um, the other thing about IVDR is about this transition period because we have the date of application that is by the 26th of May 2022. So this is the date of application. There is no other date. This is the first date. So this is day one for the IVDR. But from there, there will be some transition or some um, difference of transition uh, for each class of products. And I just want to remind that to you. We reminded that last time with uh, Eric Volbrecht on the podcast episode, but uh, I would just want to read that to you. So first, by the 26th of May 2022, Class A devices should be following the EU uh, IVDR. So uh, Class A are like uh, some machines, some laboratory equipment. So things that are really low class. Then if you are a class A device that is delivered sterile, then you can continue to sell it under IVDD if you were IVDD before until the 26th of May 2027. So you can still during that period to continue to sell that like that. Then uh, if you are class B, uh, you have until you can continue to sell your products uh, as uh, as uh, IVDD until the 26th of May 2027 also, class C until 26th of May 2026, and class D, which is the highest risk devices, until the 26th of May 2025. So uh, these are the dates, as I've said, that um, they decided to put in place uh, to um, have uh, some kind of uh, transition waves uh, for the application of the EU uh, IVDR for certain medical devices, uh, in vitro diagnostic devices. Uh, I suppose this is also for um, letting, if I can say, having more maybe notified bodies that will be coming and then um, approving devices. But yeah, this this is a situation actually where we have actually only six notified bodies and we'll look at that just after. Uh, and um, for a lot of manufacturers, which can create a lot of problems here. But there is a plan, there is a transition period. I hope this will be uh, helping a lot. Next topic uh, is the guidance, uh, SSCP update. Uh, so uh, we have the MDCG 2019-9 revision one that was updated. Um, the update mainly is about uh, the SSCP that should have a unique identification number and also a clarification related to the basic UDI-DI and SSCP, the fact that um, you can have one basic UDI-DI for multiple products, so you can have also one basic UDI-DI for multiple SSCPs. But remember, one SSCPs go with only one UDI-DI product. So this is many this clarification that they are trying to put on the 
on the on the guidance uh, and you will see that uh, directly at the beginning there is a small table saying where uh, are happening those those updates here but uh, yeah sscp is really important for implantables and class uh, three devices uh, so you have also to have that within the udamed database uh, so it means that it should be approved by a notified body and then placed on the udamed database uh, there is also inside the sscp two kind of um, uh, parts we have if, if if the SSCP is for professionals and also for layman person, uh, then you have two different languages. You have the language specifically for the professionals and then you have the languages for the layman person. Okay, next step is the uh, handover. So we talked about that in a podcast uh, related to the EU um, expert panel handover to the EMS or European Medicine Agency. So we're um, asking ourselves why there are this agency specifically because many expert panel expert panels for medical devices and in vitro diagnostic devices, but it is moved to a pharma uh, agency. So mainly uh, this means that this will be under the supervision for of this uh, of the EMA, but it will still be managing anything about medical devices. We had as I said this discussion uh, with Eric Volbrecht uh, on the podcast and this is something that is um, um, happening and the question that we were asking ourselves was uh, okay is there kind of a, a correspondence with what is happening now in the US I mean now since a long time in the US with the FDA that is managing medical devices plus pharma plus uh, anything food etc uh, do we move to uh, one agency that is managing everything in Europe but for now the answer is no uh, we'll see maybe in the future because for now uh, we don't have exactly the same model as, a, as the FDA. Then the second topic that we discussed also with Eric Volbrecht is um, one call, it's a call, so it's not a proposal, it's not happening, it's just a call for an extension of two years of the transition period. So actually the EUMDR is um, uh, and we have a transition period actually between the 26th of May 2021 until the 26th of May 2024. So here we have the SNITEM, which is a French French agency, uh, not French agency, a French association, and the BVMED also a German association that are asking if we can have an extension of two years. Uh, of the transition period for the EU uh, MDR. Why? Because the every uh, manufacturers or all majority of manufacturers did renew their certificate just before the 26th of May 2021. So what does it mean? It means that they have their certificate that goes until the 26th of May 2024. But as everyone has done that, it means that notified bodies will have a big challenge because they will have to certify too much certificates by end of uh, by May 26, 2024, which means that this is a challenge for notified bodies, but also a challenge for manufacturers that have to maintain their products on the market. So our advice again is do it earlier, try to move to EU MDR earlier to avoid this situation. Because as I said, the SNITEM and BVMED made a call for that, but we don't know if there will be any uh, discussion about that from the uh, from the EU Commission. Swiss Medic. So the Swiss Medic uh, is announcing that they are creating a database like the Udamed, but for Switzerland. Uh, as a reminder, so Switzerland was uh, kind of excluded from the European Union uh, for medical devices with EU MDR because there was no signature about uh, a mutual recognition agreement. So between Switzerland and Europe, what it means, it means that. Um, Switzerland is now considered as a third party country, so it means that they are, they have to appoint an uh, authorized representative if you go to uh, Europe and also an importer. Um, it's the same in Switzerland. If European people want to go to Switzerland, they have to appoint also an authorized representative and an importer. And here, uh, Swiss, Switzerland was managing uh, same kind of databases that they were in Europe, like with the um, CHRN number, which is the copy of the SRN number. And now they are trying also to uh, create a database to register economic operators directly on the database and also register the devices on the database. So um, 
there is two things here. Here, first, they do that because man, it's needed to have this kind of of of, uh, of management of information that can be also public to know which products are also authorized on the Swiss market. And I suppose it's also to align with what is happening in Europe. In case there is the signature of the mutual recognition agreement, there is already some alignments in terms of the practices, so there will be no big changes for for the manufacturers. I mean, this is my my supposition, but maybe I, I, I'm completely wrong. So. Um, um, this was announced, but we have no date now when it will be in place. But just for you to, to know that um, maybe soon you will have the possibility to access a platform, a database where you can place your information as economic operators plus as, uh, as uh, within your medical devices also that are uh, within the Swiss market. So Spain, so the EME. AEMPS, sorry for that, AEMPS, uh, the, uh, the Spanish authority, just announced uh, some updates in terms of the licenses. So prior to create a medical device or uh, somebody that is managing medical devices uh, in, the, in, the, in the Spanish market, like manufacturers, like importers, etc. Prior to open a company in Spain, you have to ask for a license to the authorities. So here there is a, an update in terms of, um, of the licensing for uh, creation of uh, manufacturers or economic operators within the Spanish market. And here you have all the information that are available uh, so uh, on the on the show notes where you can see exactly what is needed. There is also the information about what you have to fill, etc. So remember, um, I'm I've ne- I've not seen that in other countries, but in Spain, if you are um, making manu- if you are a manufacturer and you are making medical devices, you have to ask a license prior to opening your business and prior to uh, be able able to place your devices on the on the market. Now let's go to the US. So we have, as usual, the monthly uh, newsletter from the US, the US Medicine. And uh, what is important that um, on this letter is just to have a summary of all what's happening in the US. And one of the facts that I read on it is um, is about the recall of direct antigen rapid tests. And I was sure I was not surprised. I was say okay because they are not working well or because there is an issue with them. And the issue mainly is that they were not authorized at all. So it means that the manufacturer decided to place them on the U.S. market without any authorization, without any registration, without anything. And now the um, FDA asked them to recall everything and then to, uh, I mean, destroy them because uh, they, they will not be able to be reused again. So mainly this is also an alert to say if you are placing any medical device in the U.S. market, remember that you have to register within the FDA. You have to get uh, some authorization before to place that. And the risk, as you've seen here, is the fact that FDA can ask you to recall everything and it will cost you also a lot of money for doing that. So in China, there is a guidance in China that was issued. Um, I'm not reading Chinese, so it was really difficult for me to <laughs> read everything, but many it's a guidance for the registration and the review of uh, the artificial intelligence medical devices. So many you have more and more now medical devices that are running uh, with, uh, an art- uh, with uh, a module for artificial intelligence. Uh, so the idea here is mainly that um, the Ch- China is providing some elements on how you can place those kind of devices on the Chinese market. What are the criteria that they will be uh, looking at, etc. So if you can read Chinese or if you have a good translator uh, that you can translate the guidance. So this will help you uh, to place then your devices on the Chinese market. In Egypt, so if you are selling your products in Egypt, uh, you have there also a guidance for the labeling of data on your medical supplies. So uh, laboratories, medical devices, anything that is medical, uh, you have some labeling requirements and this guidance is providing that to you. So there is inside a table saying, I would need to see this, I need to see this number, this information, this name, etc. So if you want to make a gap between your labels and the ones that are authorized in a uh, in Egypt, and if you are selling your devices in Egypt, then uh, this guidance will be helping you to really be compliant and to make a, a, a to check one by one if everything is fine. Uh, everything is on the show notes, so go there and just click on the link, and you'll find all the information about uh, the Egyptian guidance. 
Okay, some events now. So what's happening from the medical device uh, sphere? So uh, first, the Team PRC. So Team PRC is organizing a, a webinar on April uh, 12th about uh, sanctions. So in case you are non-compliant to the regulations, what kind of sanctions you can have? I suppose they can talk also about PRC if you are not following the regulations. So what the PRC, what are the risks for the PRC also? What are the risks for the companies, etc.? So you will have uh, two people that will be uh, mentioning, I, I didn't, man, I didn't uh, pick their names. Uh, so that will be making this um, event. The Team PRC is an association for uh, for people that are mainly uh, willing to be a PRC. Uh, so um, this event is specifically for the people that are um, registered within the Team PRC association. So you can still register with them. There is a lot of webinars. Last time I have done with them a webinar, uh, webinar on vigilance reporting. Uh, so people were really happy. So if you want to attend all those webinars, if you want to get also some assistance from them, because they are providing assistance in case there is some questions about PRC or maybe you, you need a lawyer for that, etc. So they can also help you uh, for that. So don't hesitate to go and register with them. Next event, the MedTech Forum. So um, it will happen in Barcelona the th between the 3 and 5th of May 2022. Normally, I will be there. So I will have been registered as press uh, within the MedTech Forum. So I will be there. So I will try to make some videos and show you what's happening there. Try to, um, to invite also people to uh, get interviewed uh, at the forum. So uh, I'll see. I'll see what will happen there. So uh, yeah, it's the first, my first exit, <laughs> like I say, from the office uh, since uh, COVID um, time. So I hope yeah, the, everything will be there. I mean, a lot of people will be there, so that we can really discuss and make a good uh, good discussion. And so, if you are going there, don't hesitate to inform me, and then we can meet and we can have a discussion also. Last event, so the Green Belt, so Green Belt certification program. So we will have uh, another session uh, in April. So the first session, the French versions, which will happen April 18th until April 22nd. And the English version, which will happen the next, the following week, April 25th until April 29th. So don't hesitate to register. So during five days, we'll go through the UMDR. And don't worry, it's not full five days. It's just that uh, there is only one hour during the day where we'll be, I will be spending time with you and, and, uh, and uh, showing you everything about a certain topic. But the rest of the time, it's self-paced. So it means that you receive the material, you receive the quizzes, you receive the assignments, and you can do that by yourself. But one hour per day, I will be with you and I will make a presentation and I will uh, show you or answer your question, etc. So uh, the first day, it will be about a general overview, which is about um, changes. What, wh why did we change from MDD to MDR? Uh, the timelines, the significant changes, etc. Uh, second will be about economic operators. Third day, it will be about um, uh, uh, classification, uh, conformity assessment, classification, uh, notified bodies, etc. Uh, number four, it will be about technical documentation and uh, quality management system and clinical, uh, clinical data, so all technical information. And day five, it will be UDAMED and UDI. And then the day six, you can start your exam and participate to this exam that, uh, that I'm providing also. And if you succeed, you can get your uh, certificate for uh, to be uh, that that you have really achieved uh, the the exam and that you have uh, successfully passed uh, all the all the tests. Okay, so don't hesitate to go to the show notes and you will get the links for uh, registration. So register as soon as possible because yeah, uh, it's filling up uh, really quickly and we have people always that are maybe moving to the next session for the following uh, following month. But don't hesitate and register as soon as possible. Okay, notified bodies. So this month, uh, did we have a new notified body? So the answer is yes. So we had SIQ, so Slovenia Institute of Quality and Metro Metrology. Uh, so it's the 28th notified body that was appointed under MDR, not IVDR, but MDR. So uh, as a reminder, we have now uh, 28 notified body for MDR and six notified body for IVDR. So congratulations to SIQ for, for this achievement. I'm sure they will, this will be helping a lot uh, all the manufacturers. Um, so don't forget, um, I mean, regarding notified bodies, uh, there is really a challenge actually to find a notified body and to get audited. Uh, but you have 
to do it by now because more you are waiting, more the challenge will be bigger. So try to contact a notified body as soon as possible. If you have already a notified body, so ask them for a timeline for, uh, for your MDR transition. If you have no notified body at all and if you are new, like a startup, uh, it will be really a challenge for you. So don't think that there is an issue. No, it will be a challenge for you because there are Notified bodies are prioritizing their current customers and they are putting in the waiting list all the uh, the new ones that uh, are, have no notified body for, uh, because they are startups or uh, they are no pro new products. So um, continue, continue, continue. If I can say to contact them, but yeah, this is uh, this is something that a lot of manufacturers will be experiencing. And if you, as I've said, more you are waiting, more you will have this situation. So uh, don't uh, don't uh, yeah don't give up. Uh, if you are going to the UK, there are still three notified bodies, uh, BSI, SGS, and UL. Uh, but yeah, UL, for example, is only for IVDR. B, B, uh, uh, SGS is only for medical devices and IVD uh, products. And BSI is for medical devices, implantable devices, and IVD products. So um, there is only three notified bodies, uh, approved bodies for the UK. And you have until the 20, uh, the 30th of June 2023 uh, to get UKCA for the UK market. So don't neglect that. Don't uh, wait. Uh, try to get a notified, but an approved body as soon as possible to get your products on the UK market. Okay, what happened within Easy Medical US? So this month we had three, uh, four podcasts. Uh, we had the first one, so uh, why do we need the common specification for class D IVDR with Andrea Stanger from TubeSud? So yeah, we had those common specifications that were published for class D devices like uh, coronavirus products or products that are really high class. Uh, and we discussed with uh, Andrea Stenger from TubeSud why this is important, what is inside also, what are the specifications, and uh, yeah, why people should be really uh, look, have, have a look at, uh, at this document here. Then we have the episode 171. Uh, what lessons did we learn doing clinical evaluations? So uh, this is an episode with Cesare Magri from Beyond Clinical. So we discussed about uh, expert. I mean, we have now since <laughs> one year, if I can say, some experience with notified bodies about uh, clinical evaluation. So we try to explain that to you on this uh, on this podcast. So if you are um, on your way to get certified. And if you have finalized your clinical evaluation or if you are in the way to finalize it, please look at this episode just to hear and learn what are uh, experiencing some of the manufacturers uh, and what are the questions that maybe some of the notified bodies are asking because it's really important. So I hope yeah, you will listen to that. Uh, episode 172. Uh, how to sell medical devices online in the EU and US market. So here it was with Michael Weatherington. And as, as I said on the episode, we have a lot of manufacturers that are now contacting us because they say, oh, my importer doesn't want to sell my products anymore because I need that, 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 that. Yeah, because now with the, uh, the EU MDR, importers, distributors, uh, economic operators, they have some duty so they cannot place a device on the market if it is not compliant and they have a lot of checks to do also. So if they don't receive those documentation, they will not accept your products at all. So it's why we are also helping uh, some, some manufacturers like that. But um, if you are trying to sell online or on some platform like Amazon or others, um, please look at this episode just to understand what maybe are the challenges there. And the last one, episode 173. So we discussed with uh, Eric Volbrecht about uh, what we said before, the expert panel move to the EMA and also the, um, the extension of two years that is called by SNITEM and, uh, and BVMED. Uh, so is it relevant or not? Does it make sense or not? Will the EU, EU Commission listen to that or not? So these are all the uh, questions that, uh, that we discussed on the, on the episode. Uh, so don't hesitate to go there and uh, to try to look at uh, what, what Eric said and also what uh, was the experience, if I can say, with the uh, IVDR, with MDR, with all, all the other uh, legislations. 
Okay, thank you for listening to this episode. I hope it was helpful for you. Don't hesitate to go to the show notes uh, to just look at all the links that I have provided. And if you have any questions, info, I-N-F-O, at easymedicaldevice.com. Info at easymedicaldevice.com. Don't hesitate, I would be really happy to help you. And lastly, I wanted to wish a happy Ramadan to all the Muslims all over the world. So I hope you'll have a, a good month. Thank you.